one. This podcast is brought to you by Club Force. Club Force is the Irish leader in club automation, simplifying payment collection, communications and fundraising for members, clubs and leagues. Club Force has been championing club volunteers and making sport happen since 2009. Delighted to be joined by Tyrone senior footballer Con Kilpatrick uh, to look back on a fantastic year for Con and uh, Tyrone. Con, I suppose. With it having all finished up now with the inter county scene, has it begun to sunk in the GR All Ireland champions yet? Uh, to be honest, it hasn't even sunk in that we're Ulster champions for me, to be honest. Um, it's been a great year with your own. Um, obviously, when Ulster was unbelievable in, in the second year, but and to get to even an All Ireland final in the second year um, was a dream come true, but to finally get up them steps and, and lift Sam McGuire is, is something that I'll, I'll never forget and, and hopefully it sinks in sooner rather than later to be honest What's that feeling like when you get to go up them steps? It's just magic so it is um, you're just surrounded by the boys that you've been with all year training in the winter, in, in the sleet, in the snow, um, and even for the last year, like boys, I've been there. Um, it's just, it's incredible to be honest. Did you get to? Would did you watch back the final yet, or anything um, against me? <laughs> uh, I've, I've, it was on like during the celebrations. It was on maybe in a bar or two, and and you were kind of just watching it, but you weren't paying attention. Um, but I watched it once. Uh, by myself just and I'll hopefully over the next week or two you get to watch it another few times just to get an in-depth look at, at what way um, we actually went on the day and, and look look there was there was negatives and there was positives but um, we're just thankful we came out on the right side on the day um, and there's definitely a lot of things to take back to the drawing board and improve for next year The celebrations at the end I suppose did it make it all the more special everything you'd went through throughout the year that really made that group kind of closer? Yeah, I think, um, look, everybody knows what went on with during the year. We got the tanking down in Killarney by Kerry, uh, then COVID hit, and then the game was postponed, and then it was back on. Um, I definitely think it was, it, was, it was a tough year for us because when the game was called off, obviously you were disappointed, and but we kind of... Hope that the GAA would look at our own circumstance and and know that it was out of our control. Um, look, it's a, it's a global pandemic. At the end of the day, it's not just it's not just happening here in Toronto. Um, but yeah, it definitely it definitely brought the group together. It made that bond stronger. Um, and we all just knew that we were in it for for the team rather than individual purposes. The final itself against Bale, you mentioned your second year. How did you find the build up to only being in your second year for the final? The build up was crazy, to be honest, Paul. Um, like every club in Tone got behind us, every person in Tone got behind us. Like you've seen it um, with the buttons and flags, um, people texting and ringing you, wishing you well, um, people dropping letters even to the house, like the wee cards. Um, it was a it was a great great preparation um for the two weeks because it made you want it more because you knew you, that you weren't just playing for the team you were playing for the people of Trone, and that's for the people in Trone that live here and also who who live elsewhere um throughout the world we knew everybody had our back and um and it was just great to to feel that there. Did you try and kind of avoid some of that or just soak it in? Um. I tried to do a bit of both, to be honest. Like everybody was was taxing stuff, uh, and a few were taxing about tickets, and I tried to reply to as many as I could because, um, years ago, like years ago, like I I was that age at one time, and, and I looked up to boys who were playing in the finals and stuff, and I remember what it felt like taxing them, and and maybe them were playing, um. So, I always feel like. 
you owe something to, to definitely the younger generation because the you were once that age looking up to boys and it was nice if they ever paid or ever talked to you. So and also the older generation at the end of the day, they're the ones paying their, their hard earned money um to come and see us. Although it's not a professional sport and stuff, they still have to pay their money um at the end of the day to come come and watch us and, and we try to do as best as possible for, for everybody. Um so no I definitely try to soak it all in. Before that Mayo game, you obviously get told during the week, I presume, that you're going to be uh, going up against Matthew Ryan. And when you see the performances you are given, how did you prepare yourself mentally for that? Um, look, we all know Matthew Ryan's probably been one of the standout performers uh, of, the, of the championship. Um, it was, you just have to look look at different clips and, and like me and Big Brian, uh, he probably had the task more of, of Mark and Matty, to be honest. Um, like you've seen in the first half, like especially he, he was, he was pulling out of tackles from everywhere. Um, he just always got the hand in. He always got the, the stop on. Um, so I think he deserves massive credit as well. Um, but look, we, we seem to have the partnership from the start of the championship and like we played with each other in school. Um, so we, we think we kind of work well. He's he's more the defensive worker, and I maybe get that bit more license to go forward. But at times when he's going forward, I know that I have to kind of hold back maybe a wee bit and, and cover cover him. Um, so I think we bounce well off each other, and we're in the phone plenty of times, texting and calling, just saying, "Look at this clip from not even just Matty, like obviously Connor Loftus and Darren O'Connor were going to be in around the middle, and maybe big Ian O'Shea." So. Uh, we definitely had our homework done, um, and it was just all about having that bit of luck on the day as well. I think um, things just went our way, um, and we're just glad, glad to to let Sam at the end of the day. Was there motivation maybe before the final that maybe the Tyrone midfield wasn't being talked about? I suppose compared to other kind of counties, especially that Mayo midfield is being talked up. Um, o'clock. Uh, everyone for listening to, to the podcast um from the week from from previous or even from the Ulster Ulster Championship started. Um I would listen to like the GAR yourself off the ball with Andy and Paddy. And I think yeah, leading up to the game, especially uh Andy Moore and I think I, I put up an Instagram about him. Um he he said that the Either me or Big Brand might be dropped because we don't kind of maybe have the legs for for the Mayo midfield and and look, um, yeah, that adds fuel to the fire. Like it, it makes you want to prove people wrong, and I don't mind hearing that there because obviously people are allowed their opinions. And going off the back of the whole championship, he was probably right in saying that that the Mayo midfield had had done so well. Um, and then I just put up the Instagram as a bit of a light-hearted banter, like and. To be fair, he took it well, and like I wasn't putting it up. Just I was putting it up for a bit of crack more than anything, and I was glad he actually took it well. <laughs> the final itself against Mayo, like <clears throat> that opening half, like it maybe wasn't the best game of football, but the intensity itself in that opening half, the hits that were going in, it was obviously something else playing in that particularly the opening half. Yeah, look, we know the performance at times maybe wasn't pretty and, and, and wasn't great football, but it's about grinding out at the end of the day. Um, I think from the Donegal game, we definitely had to step it up a bit from there because we knew what they were going to bring to the table. Like They've probably been on top of the throne this last number of years. Um, and then the Monaghan game, we knew what they were going to bring even more, like their the determination and tenacity of them boys and the tackle and turnovers um, and then stepping on into Kerry look we were probably completely written off against Kerry um, and people had their just reasons from off that league performance and and we just knew within the group that we had it in the locker if, if we brought all our yards to the table um, we knew that if we worked together hunted and packs um, got the turnovers in and definitely and produce the goods up at 
up the far end of the field that we wouldn't be far away. Um, and then the Mayo game, look, it's final. Uh, anything can happen. And we knew that if we brought our own pace and tried to dictate the game on our terms instead of letting them dictate, we we would be in the reckoning for, for giving it a good go. Do you love being right now? Personally, um, it gives me motivation. Um, I kind of like proving people wrong. And, and that was just one example of, of it. Um, like we came, the whole championship, I'd say, we we were the lesser of the midfield pairing. Um, and as a team, I think everybody was happy enough maybe for, obviously with Brian and Fergal's first year, was maybe happy enough to, to win an Ulster and see where the All-Ireland Series goes. But as a group of players, we knew, uh, like they, they were so close in 2018, um, then again in 2019 so uh, we we definitely knew that we had the players and, and the calibre of players and, and overall the squad I think um, the squad this year was as everybody's seen like we had it was hard enough to get in, into the 26 never mind get on the 15 or um, like I, I didn't make the league squad for the first three games I didn't make the 26 and that like obviously gave me motivation and, and drive to to get to where obviously I am today, uh, but there's still a lot of work to be done if we want to be compared to the likes of the dubs and the carries of this world. What's it like, I suppose, as a player when you're not making that 26? Yeah, well, well for me, it was, it was nearly uh, the breaking point, to be honest. Uh, we played Donegal in the first league game, didn't make it 26. Played Armagh in the league, didn't make the 26. And then we played Monaghan in the league. And I didn't make the 26. And at, after the third game, um, I just thought, is this is this for me? Uh, like, obviously, uh, you get all these thoughts in your head. Like, the management obviously don't have you in their plans. And, uh, like, I would rather play football, go back to club and enjoy my football. And, um. No, it definitely took took a wee while. Like I obviously had a few chats and stuff with different people, and and obviously had chats with the management, and and I just asked them like, how do I get into this team? Like I'm not I'm not asking I'm not bringing you crayon here or, or complaining. I just want to know how to how to get into the team. And look, they told me what I had to do, and then I finally made it for the Kerry game down in Killarney and I got four minutes I think at the end or something um, but I was delighted to make 26 because I hadn't made it and then championship was two or three weeks around the corner so I knew that I had to work harder than I ever had up until that point and I just dug deep and got my re- reward at the end of the day because it started in the first league game against Calvin and, and thankfully I've held my position to the all Ireland final Was that doing a lot of work for you outside of the collective training to really break into that championship team? Um, I think it's a bit of both, yeah. Doing, doing more work outside uh, and also doing more work uh, during a collective training because, so the management actually see what you're capable of. Um, I know like one of the things that they wanted me to do was, was get on the ball more in the middle and kind of start that um, transition between um, defence and, and attack and like they always said like I, I had the capabilities of catching and running strong but it was just that maybe link play which would add to my game which was I think fair enough at the time um, so it's just kind of showing them that in maybe training games or, or whatever that look I'm, I'm putting my hand up here for selection I'm trying to get on the ball as much as possible where I can and um, I'm still doing the things that you said I was good at so um, it's just kind of putting your hand up and saying give me a chance and look it's all about when you get that chance you have to take it um, if I had got my chance and it didn't work out well well then fair enough the management give you your opportunity it's all about grabbing grabbing the ball by the horns and, and just saying I want to play for Throne and I want to be in the starting 15 and in the squad for the games um, so I think that definitely helped Does it help in one way I suppose you obviously play club football at Nile Morgan and I suppose for the kickouts do you think that did help? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people say like we can't have this weird like telepathy. Maybe I don't know. Fergal or, or no, it might have been Pete Donnelly said it at one train. Um, the other before the final. Um, but now like she plays outfield for us. He has played in goals a few times. But and then again, you've Darn on the on our club team as well. So I think we kind of know each other's game inside out. Um, we've been training with each other for a many number of years, and yeah. Uh, when when you're referencing their nail on the kickouts, I think we kind of know what he's going to do before he kind of kicks the ball. So we we can kind of read where it's going, whereas other teams maybe don't know his game as strongly. Um, but obviously, he's such a big name in the GA now and probably one of the top two or three goalkeepers. Um, he, he's been getting more analysed and stuff. So a lot of people are kind of adapting to what he can do but it's just kind of having maybe that we uh, flick of the hand saying right I'm going to go here or the wee nod saying look you know where I'm going to go here now um, and people maybe don't see but no the club, having them in club uh, football definitely has helped Did it surprise you at all when you see him up in corner forward for the man and kick out? <laughs> no I think he's getting uh, he's getting unfairly done in, in that regard because that was that I don't think that was planned. It was he was kind of pushing up in the pocket and then there was a sub or something happened. And then he was kind of being told to push up and push up and I don't think he actually wanted wanted to be up there. Um but look he says I'd feel for our club and if you ask anybody in the throne setup normally when the keeper comes out with a ball the rest of the players are shouting, let him have it, let him have it, he'll do something, he'll drop it or, or whatever. But uh, we're very comfortable with him coming out in the ball. Like I would have no issues um, with that, him taking a man on even and, and driving forward and then continuing to play and then somebody just dropping back maybe and covering in goals for him. Um, it doesn't really phase me, him coming out. And it's I think it's kind of great to see because it gives you maybe that extra extra man coming forward that nobody really knows about um, but no he's, he's definitely he's a great asset for our club outfield and, and I think he does his role well for Trump definitely and you mentioned like between yourself Brian Morgan obviously Darren McCurry paired to Eden Dork as well does it make it surreal in one way three club players all on the one team um, yeah, definitely. It definitely is, is a great feeling now. Um, it means you're not... Obviously, there's a few boys <clears throat> who are the only club player that play for Trone, which may be a bit lonely and, and, and stuff, but having them two boys beside you is is definitely great. Like You're, do, you're kind of doing it all together all the time, and it's a sense of... You're, you're playing with your friends at the end of the day, so it's memories that'll... Like even the buntons and stuff that were up around the club and, and the pictures of us wishing well wishes like that they'll be remembered for a very long time and, and nobody can kind of take that away from us. Um and it's great to even have the backing of your own club mates and management and, and supporters and um, wishing you well all the time. So yeah, it's it's definitely a positive having having them boys to look up to and, and then be playing alongside. You talked about the strength of the panel, but against Kerry and Mayo particularly did you almost feel confident in any game towards the end when you see the likes of Dara Canavan and Colin McShane coming in yeah like our, our squad depth is, is scary at the moment um, anybody can start anywhere and every any given day like um, it's always kind of refreshing obviously whenever like you have the likes of them boys coming on like the caliber of McShane and Dara and Mark Bradley and Tierna McCann and, and like them boys have been have been there before, um, some of them a longer time than others, um, and they're definitely great assets to have off the bench. But then again, they're putting their hand up as well for a starting position, and they could start just as easily as, as somebody who actually has a, a number 15 jersey. So, yeah, again, it gives you, if you're still on the pitch at the time they come on, it gives you a great boost because, like, the speed of Dora or the, the power of Machine. Um, just the kind of presence they all kind of bring is something special and look we know the, the strength and depth of our squad that's why we we I think have done so well this year because the impact them boys have made um, and definitely next year there'll be 
a lot more boys putting their hands up for starting positions and and send the management look. I want to be in from the start, and that's just it. Yeah, especially when you see like like Ron O'Neill, Rory Brennan, Michael Cassidy. These players not even making the twenty six. Like yeah. that has to, I suppose, keep you on your toes all the time. Yeah, look, um, Morgan, I think said in a podcast before, if you, if you could charge into our in house games, then I think it would be packed because the level of of intensity that is that the the way the the speed of the ball moving and just the the intensity of the overall game um and as you're referring to them older boys like they've been about far longer than i have and before i made the panel i I looked up to boys like that um and i think it just goes to actually show the the strength of of the squad um Obviously, maybe some things have happened in the past with injuries, maybe in COVID and stuff. But, but um, I think boys will be back next year, um, stronger and fitter, and and there's no reason why they'll not be in, in the fifteen if if things go to plan for everybody. So it's just about all performing well and, and putting your hand up and making your mark. The COVID scare you did have, con like, what was it like for them? A few weeks when I suppose you could only. I suppose do little training, but you obviously weren't able to have full panels most of the time during that time. Yeah, Paul, look, it was a tough time for us. Um, it's was particularly tough up here at, at home in general. Like it, it was rife for Tyrone uh, and and things like that. Um, look, we just had to to grind the training sessions out whenever we could, and, and whoever was there was there. And the boys obviously filtered back in and. That's why we felt that that game needed to be postponed because boys just weren't right and we had the medical um, evidence to support it. And I think it's a, a, a case of um, just kind of looking at the overall picture, like we're amateur performers at the end of the day and, and there's obviously bigger things in life than football, but a lot of the time football's at the forefront for most boys. Um, so now if it's, a, if it's a difficult period and, and hopefully that, it can sort itself out whenever next year comes around and, and nobody kind of has any major issues with it. Yeah, no, you as players, I suppose, when it was being talked about maybe the Tyrone are trying to pull a fast one here or something. Okay, look, in the media, there's always going to be a bit of speculation about what, whatever people have their opinion on. And we, we kind of didn't really get involved in the media because we knew it was going to be the number one topic um, coming up in the next week or two. Um, but look, people have their own opinions and I think if it happens, you have to be within your own county to know what actually happened. And I think if it happened in some other people's counties, they wouldn't be saying the things they were saying. Um, but we, we really didn't dive into, into the media. Um, we kind of stayed away from it and just uh, did our own thing and got about our own business. Was there a fear in one sense there when they're like as players when there was being talked about for a while that Kerry might get a walkover in the semi-final in terms of us um, like, dropping no. out of COVID or just because if the game actually happened if the game didn't happen at all like was was there a fear for you not getting to play that semi-final fuck yeah look um, it was it was a tough decision to make um, like we knew Going into the game, that look, we were just weren't ready yet, boys. Like from training and, and stuff, just weren't ready. And we thought that if we got another week, we would definitely have boys back and boys fitter and, and boys just getting that extra week of, of training. Um, it was it was it was probably uh, a tough thing to take that that we weren't going to play, but like I think. Going on the back of of like Christian Eriksen dropping on the pitch there during the Euros or the World Cup or whatever it is a couple of months ago, like if that had happened uh, in our game, which could have well happened because nobody actually knows the definitive effects of COVID and, and what's going to happen and when. And um, like we were putting our hands up saying like who's going to take responsibility for this happening? Um, but I know it can happen in any other given day, not just because of COVID. But we were just looking at all, all the factors. Um, and just 
the decision was made that luck were not ready and uh, we have to do this here. And was was there much collective training being able to be done as a full team before that carry game? Um, to be honest, not really. Um, I'd say maybe the week leading up to it, boys were filtering back in more and, and kind of, it was nearly the full squad. But but a couple of weeks before that, no, it 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 wasn't nowhere near where it should have been if COVID hadn't ahead. Was that league game interly? I suppose maybe it was just one of those days where anything went wrong. For you, could have went wrong. Was that always in the back of your minds going into this Kerry game? Okay, um, like I think we actually travelled down on the day of the game. I can't even I can't even remember now, but I think like that I maybe had it taken the fact that like it's a long drive down to Killarney like for us. Um like I think somebody said that they heard we'd done a gym session before for the the match, which I don't know where he got that out of. <laughs> uh, um but look, you get those days like the year before we were hammered by Galway down in Galway, and then the week after we went out and beat Dublin up in Healy Park. Um Things just happen in football. It happens in club. It happens in county. And it was just an off day for for Tyrone and and Kerry had put her lights out. To be honest, um, and things things just didn't go wrong. But it always leaves you that you can go back to the drawing board and improve. And and thank God it wasn't the, the latter stages of the championship. It was it was the league. So we definitely had time to to look at different scenarios and improve. The Kerry game was it early on? Was that where you really targeted? Because I suppose the slow start against Kerry really killed you in the league with just too much work to do. Yeah, I think look, in training we've been playing like five ten minute games, and we were just taking every five and ten minutes as a game. Um, we knew that if we up the intensity and just kept the ball and moving. Uh, and not kind of run into the tackles and stuff. Like some of the players Gary has is, is scary, like and they put your lights out um any day of the week, both defense defensively and attack minded. Um I think we kinda wanted to get to the water break in the game. We kinda wanted to get we went into half time a point up after Morgan kicked out score. Um then we went to, I can't remember the, the second water break what the score was, but I think we might have been down maybe a point or, two, or a couple of points maybe. Um, and then we got the goal, obviously, and stuff. But, yeah, look, we knew the the level of players Kerry had. And to be in with any chance against them, boys, you need to be at the top of your game. So I think we, we brought that on the day. Absolutely. And Brian Dewey and Fergie Logan's role, how good were they as a joint management team? Because we haven't really seen many joint managers in the GA for quite a while. Yeah, I think obviously it's it was a talked about topic. How will Joan and, and the Empire's handle double management? But look, they've the won an all Ireland under twenty one title together. It's not as if they're just coming off the back of this year. Um I think they have the persona obviously of this good cop, bad cop. Um where kind of brands more strictly and they'll tell you how it is and Fergal will it'll kinda of put your arm around your shoulder and and um it's it's a great combo like um it obviously has worked this year and boys obviously respect them and listen to them and look they they both play for Tron themselves so they've been there and done it um so it's definitely one that one that hopefully will work uh, for many years to come. Does it help in one way like a lot of players would have like idolised Brian Dewey uh, playing for Tyrone Tyr- Tyr- when you're growing up? Yeah, look. Like I think everybody in the country knows about Brian. And um, he was a a great great asset to Tron Tron football. He he was a dog at number ten role. Like he worked like I don't think I've anybody I've seen anybody in Tron work as hard in my life. And and obviously you look up to that. Like he's an all Ireland winning captain. Um, I'll always remember like the different points, like point against Kerry from the sideline after he took maybe two or three men on, and he's it's 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 great having 
boys like that that you looked up to now that's, that's kind of managing you and coaching you and even like Pete Donnelly and Collie Holmes and, and Joe McMahon in the background team like them boys have all played for Throne all of all arm medals and, and you just hoped that you were going to be there one day and, and thank God we are You talked about Peter Donnelly there he's obviously worked with Ulster Rugby but how important do you feel his role was with like Tyrone this year helping you with your conditioning and everything? Yeah, Petrol has been massive. Um, definitely one of the key key successes to us. But um, look, it hasn't just happened this year. Petrol was with us or with them boys, sorry, and a couple of years ago, and then he went to Monaghan for a year. And he's he was at Ulster Rugby, and now he's made the step up to Ireland Rugby Sevens. Like so, just. It just shows the where he's at in his field of work. Like he's top top coach, uh, top top S and C instructor. He's he's just his work that he does behind the scenes. His sessions are always planned before we go out to the pitch. Maybe gym sessions are always planned. Maybe a week in advance. Um, he knows what we need to be doing to to be at the top performance. Like we're not doing silly gym sessions. We're not just doing gym sessions for the sake of it. It's all with a purpose. And, and at the end goal, like I think he had, a, he had a big calendar from the start of the year right to the end of the year with every session already planned. Uh, um, we kind of took a look at it then the week before the final and, and he was like, look, this is where we were and this is where we wanted to be and now this is where we are. So um, yeah, Pete has a major, major respect within the group um, within Tyrone as a whole. And he he's he's looked very fondly upon um because we know the work that he does and the the assets that he brings. Just briefly looking at the team overall and some of the performances, I suppose two players that I suppose stand out this year, particularly Kier McGeary and Connor Myler. The work they just got through in every game from the start of the championship was insane. Yeah, it's it's scary if, if you look at actually some of the stats. Uh, look, them two boys are complete animals in, in, the, in every sense of the word. Like, they will run from the first minute till whatever minute that the referee blows the final whistle. Like, Kieran has definitely had his best year in a throne shirt by a, a mile. Um, he was linking up to play. He was tackling back. He was getting scores. He was catching the ball. He was shutting out um, opposition. Um, he just kind of done everything. And I think it's a credit to him because he's put in the hard work. He's he's talked about in training. Whatever he's talked about, he's done on the pitch. And he's been, been a massive player. And then, like, you go on to Connor. Like, I always thought, even when I wasn't on the team, that, that Myler didn't get the recognition he deserved. Um, he he mightn't get on the ball a lot in previous years, but he's definitely shut out players um, and took that selfless uh, role of, of being the man who hunts down somebody else. And I think, obviously, this year, it's shown again with like the likes of Ryan McHugh from Donegal, with Clifford, um, from Kerry and then again with Paddy Durkin he done an immense job as well and like everybody knows he he was linking up to play again he was getting scores he was taking men on like he was just a dog for 70 80 minutes like both of them boys and again you look up to them because you want to be able to go for that long and and put in the work that they put in and, and I think it's a credit to both of them that they they deserve everything that they get from this year and it's a tight one for who would go for player of the year between between a few Tyrone boys but um, them two are definitely up in the mix and, and getting the rewards yeah. at the end of the day Who do you think will get it? <laughs> to be honest I, I don't know I think I'll leave that there to to the, the proper officials it's a uh, like they've all played their different parts and different roles and um, they've obviously both achieved man of match awards, etc. And um, I, th- I think it's actually genuinely too hard to call. Um, and I think there's maybe one or two who could be added to that list. Um, I think the Dazzler, he's been on great form this year. Um, 
you know, if you don't get scores at the at the other end of the field, you're not going to win games. Um, and then I think Morgan, he's had a, a brilliant year as well as as being the goalkeeper, and he's took it to a new level. Um, and I think everybody's recognised that from probably the Monaghan match and the Ulster final. So I think there's there's definitely three or four or five boys that could be up for player of the year. So I'll just leave the <laughs> the decision to the to the officials. As well throughout the year, there must have been a like, huge con- confidence defensively, like the full back line of McKeon, McNamee, Hamsey, Peter Hart was getting better every game, McGeary, Frank Burns. Like, obviously, you're coming up against Clifford and these top class players, but playing that midfield, you must have had confidence with that defence. Yeah, look, our defence is some of them boys are unbelievable. Um, I think that they are finally getting the credit that they deserve um, because they've put in massive performances over the championship and they've been given a role or a task to do and they've done it to a T. Um, like even the full back there of, of Michael and Potty and, and Ronan. Them boys are just machines and uh, we'll be coming up against Potty and Michael in, in club championship here in two weeks like and um, and you know what you're going to get from them. Um, the halfback, like Frank and PD, have been about a number of years. PD, obviously, longer. And he has got better um, with every game. He, he's another workhorse. He, it's, he's strong in the tackle. Um, so, yeah, definitely knowing that them boys are behind you kind of gives you that license to go forward maybe a bit more and where you know that they'll definitely win their one-on-one battle. So it's, it's great to have the likes of them boys are in defence. Going into 2022, you're obviously not looking at it yet with club championships to play, but it won't be too far coming around. It's obviously going to be a lot different now going in as all Ireland champions. And there's obviously an eagerness there to kind of get to that Dublin level. But I suppose even to, I suppose the main aim will be to try and back it up with back-to-back titles. But I suppose... The Gaelic Championship now is it's it's really becoming so open. Yeah, look to be honest, I'm I'm quite excited to get back ready, even though we're only two weeks out of winning the All Ireland. Um, I think it's maybe brought that hunger back for a lot of people, um, and even the hunger in the county because they kind of want us. Everybody maybe wants to see us do well now, whereas in the past maybe people had their doubts. Um, but yeah, if you look at the likes of Dublin, like they were the benchmark for where everybody wants to be. Um, I think now that we, we won, we're sitting at the top table again. People will maybe put a bit more... <clears throat> I think people had respect for Throne, but I think now that we were all Ireland champions, people will have a bit more um, respect for us. And we're going into the games maybe a bit more stronger than, than people kind of looked at us before. Um, but yeah, we're, we're excited for the test already. Um, and look, if we ever got the chance to, to win a back-to-back title, it would be great. But we will just, we'll take pre-season first and then we'll move into the league and then we'll slowly, we'll gradually move into the championship um, whenever the management and all fields is ready. So um, yeah, just definitely looking forward to getting back. What would be now your own kind of personal name in, for, for in the Tyrone jersey in 2022? Um, I think just um, kind of backing up from where I left off. Like uh, There might be a few boys come into the panel. Um, there'll be a few boys that maybe weren't in the 26 and weren't in the starting 15 that'll want a starting 15 jersey. And you're basically going back to the drawing board. Like nobody's... I know for a fact that nobody's shirt is guaranteed. Um, so I'm just going to have to strip it all back, work hard, uh, prove again that, that I want to be in the team. And if I get the chance, then I'll definitely take it. Um, so I'd say that would be kind of the main aim is just having kind of a, getting a jersey and having a good league campaign and kind of getting ready for the championship is where I want to start off with. Club's obviously the main priority. I heard Nine Morgan talking that he was straight back into club action and 
you're making yeah. Brian Kennedy. Like, what's that like yeah. when you're midfield with him all year and then you tee up against him in club? Yeah. Um, obviously, we've kind of got sick of each other maybe this past four or five <laughs> months. Um, but now, nah, look, club's where you start at the end of the day and you wouldn't be in the throne team if it wasn't for your club. Um, it was definitely weird lining out against him. I think we had a few... We were sniggering and laughing, had a few jokes like during the match, but look, we all want to win with our clubs first and foremost, and we want our clubs to succeed just as much um, as we want to succeed with your own. Um, but it's great. It was it was it was weird to be honest going going up against them just literally a week a week later, and um, but it was a good battle, and they kind of got the upper hand of us. They beat us by a point, but look the championship's coming about and it's most important at the end of the day so we hopefully we'll pick for, for that You talked about the strength of the Tyrone panel um, I think last year really hit home with Dungannon winning the championship how tough of a championship you have up there Yeah um, I think if you ask anybody in Ulster I'd say we are definitely I'd say up there with the, the toughest championship um, like you get people from all around Ulster coming, coming to coming to watch um drone division one games, um, like anybody could win any game on any given day, um, I think that's a great thing to have, because you you never go into a game thinking we have this one before that the ball's actually thrown up, and I think that just shows a level of respect, um, each team has for each team and each player has for each player because. Um, we all know that that there's a, I don't think there's been a back-to-back winner in maybe 10 years Please. Um, maybe even longer I wouldn't be quite sure on the exact but um, I think it, it's definitely great great to be a part of it and, and knowing that you, you're in with a, sh- a chance of winning a championship in Toronto Do you enjoy now I suppose maybe you had your fully focused there with the county and now you can give your, I suppose, full focus rather than, I suppose, the old system where it was kind of club games in between that you kind of have, I suppose, nearly your two kind of separate kind of split seasons. Um. Yeah, I think it, it, it is maybe better that you can just, you know, just tunnel vision for one, like you would just tunnel vision for the county there when we were there. Obviously, we had star games for the clubs and then now we're back fully focused on club um, there's nothing kind of going to come in the way of, of you and your and your club games and your teammates now back at the clubs and look they were there well before some of the county players were your teammates so um, you know kind of the ins and outs of them as, as well and maybe even more um, but now we are all kind of behind each other um, fully focused and, and we don't really like maybe talking maybe after training i be talking about stuff that, that happened during the year with thrown and different games and stuff, but at the moment it's just pure lead and dark. Do you think you can be there, thereabouts this year with Eden Dark? Fuck yeah, look. I think we we do have a, a great team. Um I think other teams in, in the county know that we're maybe the dark horses but on our day we could definitely pull it out of the bag and, and if, I, if things go right for us um, but yeah I'm looking forward to the club championships starting um, we have a good chance and it's just all about what happens on the day and what work you put in before and leading up to the matches uh, Finally Con, just a few questions that came in um, for you on the page no um, the first one was uh what role does uh, sports psychology play in your overall game and do you do it as a team or an individual? Um, to be honest, we didn't really have anything this year as a collective unit. Maybe boys maybe had it individually. Um, but for me personally, it wasn't a big um, thing that I brought into my game. It's maybe something that I would like to look in at down the future definitely just to look some things are for some people and some things aren't for some people but um, no it's definitely something that I would look into and, and see if it if it brings one or two percent to your game then it's better than, than nothing 
is there one particular player who's played the game or is still playing the game that um, you do uh, base your game off? That uh, was another question. Um, look, I think the, like the likes of David Moore and Brian Fenton are boys that um, I've looked up to um, when I wasn't involved in the county team and now to, to take the pitch along with some of them boys is, is a surreal feeling. Um, I think they have definitely set the benchmark for where midfielders should be in terms of they have everything. They can catch, catch, they can kick, they can run with the ball, they can kick pass in, um, the fist at the right times, they can score. Um, so I'd say the likes of them boys is definitely boys that I looked up to and still do look up to um, and try to base my game around. And just a final one, is there a particular type of conditioning a county midfielder performs throughout the year? Um, uh, well, Pete, Pete took care of all our conditioning <laughs> and all our runs and stuff. Whatever he told us to do, we just did. Um, I think it's just like in soccer, kind of being that box-to-box midfielder. Like you, you ha- It's great going forward, but... Like I've I've learned like I was always kind of an attacker minded midfielder. You have to get back at the end of the day, help your teammates out, um, and track your man. So I think that maybe um runs up and down, literally full lengths of the pitch, is what kind of helped me this year because I heard actually a quote last night at from our senior manager at our club chain. He's like, it's all great going hundred mile an hour when you have the ball going forward. But when you turn, you need to be 120 mile an hour back. And that, that kind of s- stuck with me because he's right. Everybody doesn't like tracking back and, and doing the hard yards on the back foot, but it has to be done even more sharper and stronger than you are going forward. So um, I think, yeah, like things like the Broncos and stuff definitely, definitely help. Um, and just that long distance kind of sprint work uh, and building your aerobic stamina is definitely. You need a bit of everything from midfield, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, definitely think out there. Would you focus on the jump boxes for your field and your, like, how would you perfect the field? Um, to be honest, not really. Um, I think timing is a big part of, of being able to get up and catch, catch the ball um, and making sure that you are fully stretched out to get the ball at the highest point so that your opponent's not even getting a sniff of it. Um, I think just kind of power work in the gym, more and then obviously, yeah, more explosive stuff. But for me, um, it's kind of just, I think it kind of comes more naturally than a put work in. Um, but obviously there's still area for improvement because there's plenty of balls I didn't catch throughout the year and timings were off and I didn't get up high enough. So, yeah, let's definitely have to get back to the drawing board and, and strip it all back down and see where I can improve. Yeah, some real fascinating insight there um, to the midfield game. But um, Colin Kilpatrick, um, best of luck for the rest of the season.